So you're in your third season with the Colts, right? Things mm-hmm. not going as planned, of course. Right. You're such a natural leader. How much more do you put on yourself when there's adversity? Yeah, um, definitely, you know, stepping up more, you know, vocally for sure. You know, when, when times are needed, obviously, like, you know, um, you know, obviously times when things aren't going well or little things like that, um, just finding the right moment to, you know, voice my opinion and, you know, step up and lead. Um, you know, I've I've grew in that aspect. I was I started off more of a, you know, lead by example type of deal. But over the years, I've got more comfortable with, you know, just stepping up and, you know, saying my piece just because I've noticed, obviously, like, um, you know, when I say something, guys really, you know, take it to heart. You know what I mean? And really um, listen to, you know, what I have to say. So what you were saying after that loss to the Jets, I mean, <laughs> Devo, I've never heard you swear before. You were cursing. Yeah, no, it was um, it, it, it was just embarrassing. You know what I mean? On all accounts. Um, yeah, I mean, I was, I was, I was pissed, uh, you know, I was pissed at my performance, everybody's performance, really, you know what I mean? From top to bottom, like I said, I really meant it. Um, not one person had a great game. So when something like that happens, how does one go as a leader in the locker room and turn it around? Cause it can be turned around. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've been in positions like this before. I mean, we have the right guys in the locker room to turn things around when things, things get tough. We have the right guys to point at themselves and look in the mirror and say, what do I, what can I do to be better to help the team, you know, and not point fingers. Um, you know, when Gus came in, just talking about it, being a servant leader, you know what I mean? Everybody can be a servant leader and, you know, help, help the, not only help themselves, but help each other, the man alongside of you. And, um, you know, that's what the guy's been doing. Be positive. Let's shout out some of those leaders. Who are the leaders in the locker room? I'm assuming Shaquille Leonard, one of them. Yeah, Shaq. Um, you know, you got Kenny, Gilly, uh, Grover Stewart, um, you know, Zaire Franklin. Um, you know, obviously, we, um, that's on the defensive side, really. And then um, um, you got guys like, you know, obviously, Matt Ryan. You got Q. You got uh, Ryan Kelly. Um, you got Pitt. You got JT. You know, we have a lot of guys that can lead in this locker room. All the guys feed off of that energy because it's it's all authentic. You know what I mean? Everybody's themselves. Nobody's trying to be somebody else or not. You know what I mean? Everybody knows their role and they embrace it. Uh, Shaquille Leonard, how much does he is he missed right now? I mean, he's missed a lot. You know what I'm saying? I mean, especially on an emotional standpoint. You know, part of the game. You know, he's a big emotional leader that we have. He, he still brings the juice each and every day when he comes in, coming into work. You know, get the guys going. He does everything that he can. You know, whether it's watching film to help guys that are on the field. And when he's not, you know, helping them see tendencies and picking up little things, even on the sideline, he's a, I mean, talk about a, a just a, a leader you know, and a football guy. I mean, he's, he's your guy. I met Jonathan Taylor. He was so composed and like mature mm-hmm. beyond his years. Do you think he's the best running back? And can he be in 2022? I believe so. Yes. I mean, he's got it all, you know, size, speed. He can cut, catch out the backfield. I mean, he can make a cut. And then, you know, take it 60, 70, whatever you needed to do. Um, you know, he can he can run outside, inside the tackle. I mean, he's got it all. He's a complete back. And uh, we've seen it, you know, last year, obviously. And, you know, I know the offense is going to get things going. And, um, I mean, he's going to he's gonna make things happen and, and take the lead by storm. What's your relationship with Colts fans in Indianapolis? No, yeah, I mean, I love them. Um, you know, this has been awesome since day one, you know, embracing me um, you know, after the trade and everything. And also, I mean, just... You know, like around town, you know, going around town and everything. And also even in my own neighborhood, you know, raising a family, um, being able to, you know, just raise my family, take my boys to the parks and little things like that. It's been great. How often do you get back to Hawaii? Because it's a, it's a far cry from India. Yeah. I mean, I usually try to go back every year with the fam, but um, this off season for sure, we're going to make a trip out there. <laughs> you didn't ever surf or anything, did you? Um, no, nah, not a big surfer. More fishing, spear fishing. Uh, some uh, body surfing, but not stand up. I tried. I too big for that. Yeah, I can't even imagine. I would yeah. never try. You're trying to get players to think about their money. The players' company. I think it's very cool. It's a, mm-hmm. a partnership of you and a lot of the other NFL players. And I was wondering if you could just give me like your best finance tip. Yeah, you know, um, honestly, just just being being smart with your money. I mean, I've been like that since day one, you know what I mean? Um, you know, obviously not just blowing everything that I get, you know, check by check, let me check by check. And I got a great financial advisor that's been helping me along the way. You know, one of his key tips was uh, one wife, one house, one car. <laughs> and Keep so, it simple. Keep it simple. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And, uh, you know, just being smart with your investments, knowing what you're investing in, um, you know, to obviously help you in the long run. Who are you? And, and that you played in the Super Bowl and that, that you lost a Super Bowl. So I'm curious, mm-hmm. how often do you think about that Super Bowl loss? No, yeah, I think about that all the time, honestly. I mean, it, how often? Like, what's all the time? Uh, almost, I mean, damn near every day. <laughs>
the goal is a Super Bowl, you know what I mean? A world championship. And I was so close, obviously, with the Niners my last year there. And, you know, just to get a taste of it and, you know, to come to come short, uh, it's it's definitely haunting. You know what I mean? I, I have a certain play that I always that I always it's always going through my mind. It's the, the third and 15 play to Tyreek Hill. You know, <gasps> and I we run an exit game and I come around the corner and Pat's just retreating, retreating, and I hit him as soon as he gets lets the ball go. You know, he, I got him on the ground. I look up, and it's a completed pass. And they, they you know, they end up converting uh, on the drive and scoring. And obviously, um, you know, that that gained all the momentum, you know, that they needed. And you know, if we, I mean, who knows? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I make that play. Um, you know, who knows what the, you know, it would have been fourth and forever. They would have punted. You know, we could have maybe went down and scored again. And so. so it change you as a player that one play definitely you know um just just uh like i said i mean as a player that's that's all you dream of you know what i mean i was living the dream i was you know like as a growing up as a kid you know imagine myself in the super bowl and um you know having a, a, a decent game and you know obviously that our team's winning and then all of a sudden that one play happens you did have a good game let's not like, come yeah. on let's not wait oh, yeah. put your hands on him you said oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. your old team is in the news as usual. <laughs> it's always in the news. Uh, the team rallies around Jimmy Garoppolo. Why yeah. is that? Why is he that guy? What is it about him? Yeah, I mean, I mean, Jimmy. I mean, he's just a he's a lot big locker room guy. You know what I'm saying? He gets along with everybody, um, and uh, it's just his style of leadership. I mean, he takes it by you know he he takes the room by storm. I mean, you know, I remember the first time, you know, Jimmy's first start. Um, you know, you, you know, Jimmy's always been you know a cool dude. You know, calm, collected. Yeah everything and then um I just remember him gathering the team up um on his first start you know my I think it was my third year in the league and you know just something he you know he just turned switch and everybody was like oh you know what I mean like okay yeah, what was the switch what do you mean no he just I don't know it was just like it, it he just you know a different person it's just the competitor side of Jimmy came out you know what I mean and he just he just everybody was looking around like, okay, like this is what we needed. You know what I'm saying? Like we can get it, we can get behind this guy. You know what I'm saying? And he just just the, the way he demanded the room, you know, how confident he was, you know, it's infectious. When you're confident like that going out there, you know, you got the guys around you confident, you know, knowing that, you know, yeah, today's gonna be the day we dominate. You know what I'm saying? And so he just got that it, you know, that leadership and he got that it factor, you know, when it comes to leadership and leading a team at the quarterback position. I gotta tell you, I've never root, and I don't know that I'll, I'll root for anything all year as much as I'm rooting for you to absolutely crush Patrick Mahomes this weekend. Like, I, <laughs> I appreciate it. I guess you could say, um, you know, kind of a little little bit of payback, I guess, you know what I'm saying? Um, but uh, it, it's it's a great opportunity for our, our team as well. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's yeah. count, counting us out, obviously after, especially after last week's loss. Um, it's our it's a home opener, you know what I mean? And uh, you know, guys are gonna be pumped, you know, to, to be playing at home. In, in week three and you know it's just a great opportunity for us to to really you know to show everybody that you know that we're not out of it